The fourth type of fast, and I would kind of set this one over on the side by itself a little bit, is what I call a non-food fast. And this is when you abstain from pleasurable things. Um, we do have a biblical precedent for this in Joshua chapter 3, verse 5, where it says, Sanctify yourself, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. So that sanctify yourself is removing anything uh, from your life that is going to separate you from what God is wanting to do in your life. So some people choose to abstain from social media, sporting activities, uh, social events, video games, movies, TV, all these different things. I've heard of people abstaining from extra spending. So they, they set a basic budget for their utilities and bills and groceries, but they don't spend anything on online shopping or they don't buy anything extra, just the basic necessities. Um, you know, these are all different ways that you can do a non-food fast. And I will say though, that I believe everyone should try to do at least a partial fast. Uh, because I think there's very, very few circumstances where someone couldn't at least do a Daniel fast or at least fast one meal a day. I do understand that there are some medical situations where you can't fast at all. The non-food fast is a great way to do that. But looking back at our definition of fasting in the Old Testament, fasting really has to do with food. And there's something about when you put that hunger into submission. There's something about when you tell your body that your spirit is in control and not the body that does something. So if you have to, you can do a non-food fast only, but I really encourage you to do a partial fast as well. Um, when I do any kind of fasting, whether it's a, a normal fast or a partial fast, I also fast uh, non-food items. So I will usually fast social media, fast all TV, any podcasts or anything that are not Christian podcasts or Bible podcasts. I'll put all that stuff away because I want to focus only on the Lord. And what I've found is, is usually I will see things throughout that process that I probably should just get rid of anyways. They're probably not helping me very much in life. They're probably not very much, uh, very beneficial to my spiritual health. And so I'll just choose to get rid of them permanently. One more thing under this non-food fast, I wanna to talk to the married couples for a moment. So if you're not married, you can maybe skip this part, uh, but the Bible does give us an example of married couples choosing to fast intimacy for a set amount of time. In 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse five, it says, do not deprive one another except, for, uh, except with consent for a time that you may give yourself to fasting and prayer and come together again so that Satan does not tempt you because of your lack of self-control. So if this is something that you're feeling, there's definitely a biblical precedent for it. Um, you know, there's also things uh, with your body to where because of your metabolism and because of your fatigue and things, you may uh, not necessarily be in the mood. I'm trying to keep this as PG as possible. But what I wanna say is if you are feeling this, there's a couple things that you have to understand. Both the husband and the wife need to consent to this. This isn't something that you should use as uh, uh, you know, a way to uh, withhold something from your spouse. The Bible says that it's supposed to be a consent to one another. And then also you're supposed to set a time. So it's not indefinite. It's not just going to go on and on. Well, when we feel like it, it's no, we're going to do this for three days, seven days, 21 days. And then after that, it says that you should come back together so that you're not tempted. So I just want to encourage you, you know, if you're a married couple, this is definitely not something that you have to do. Um, but there is a biblical precedent for it. If maybe you've heard of that before, or maybe you've thought, well, if we're fasting, we, you know, can't be intimate. No, there's nothing that says that you have to fast intimacy as well. But if that's something that you feel called to do, just kind of wanted to lay a little uh, groundwork and give you a little bit of an understanding of what that means. So for married couples, if you choose to do that, make sure you follow these guidelines from Paul where it says, make sure you have consent, make sure you set a time and then come back together again and be intimate at the end of that time.